Uh, hi, everyone. Natalie Mathis, uh, product marketing at Salesforce. Um, it's day three. It's 8.45 a.m. Who wants to talk about data and AI? Oh, Ooh, actually, wow. wow. Okay. Yeah. Getting more applause than I expected on that one. So with that, buckle up, because that's what we're going to talk about. But here's the thing, in all seriousness, it, it, it is a theme for a reason, right? Um, we're seeing a rapid shift in the way that we have to do things as marketers, and it's because of data, really. I mean, customers really do expect a lot more personalization because they're giving us so much data, so they expect in return for us to act like we know them. Um, and so it's really hard, though, to do that. 73% of customers expect better personalization as technology advances, and we all know that it's definitely advancing. So. Though I think the reason that we talk about it so much is it's not easy to do. So how do we start to uh, think about our data strategy? And it really is the backbone of next-gen marketing. Um, data and AI mm -hmm. go hand in hand, but your AI is only going to be as good as your data. So um, they really are the dynamic duo, and it is changing the game. It's already making marketers uh, so much more effective and productive. Five hours a week, you can see here that their time is saved because of Gen AI, and I think that number is only going to get bigger, right, as we get better um, and more advanced with our practices. So here's the thing. Centralizing data is the first step, but it's not enough. Um, so at Salesforce, we really believe that data strategy is, is crucial going forward, um, and it does really extend across uh, marketing into other departments, which we're going to get into a little bit um, in a second. But uh, this is really, really important. So what I... We like to think about um, the sort of evolution of where you're at and your moments maturity model and where this really aligns with your data foundation and your personalization practices. Now, I think if you look at the bottom left there, basic, uh, disconnected, static, per channel, you're thinking that some of the traditional one-off campaigns, dare I say batch and blast, um, but things where um, the sort of traditional marketing tactics. And as we have introduced all these new technologies and channels, um, we now have a new North Star. I loved, I don't know if Jeff is here this morning, but I loved his comment about the North Star of where to go. And I think if we think about uh, going along these two access, axes um, into more advanced AI-powered moments um, and then really being able to reach every touch point. This is sort of like the nirvana, right? Our AI-powered moments become real-time in nature. We can meet customers, both reactive and proactive, um, really having that mutual value, having the uh, helping you reach your goals um, and also really meeting your customers where they are. So if we consider this, and I know this is the great thing about this conference is there's so many different um, industries represented, there's so many different company sizes and team sizes, and so I think it's important to think about maybe where you fall on this and then where you go next, right? So we kind of broke this down into data-driven tactics across every job to be done because it is really easy to say, you know, let's have a data-driven strategy. And it's like, well, how? What, where do I start? Or I have these practices, but where do I go next? So one way to unpack this and what we're going to do today is talk a few minutes on um, each of these different sort of jobs to be done as a marketer, learn, plan, build, and run. So let's start with learn and understanding your data. Again, this is the data foundation. This is where it all starts. How do you really think about unifying your data? And it means more than just unifying it across your CRM um, or your traditional sort of data models, right? This is thinking about how do you pull in anonymous data? Someone clicks an ad, they browse your website. How do you think about your behavioral data on past purchases and what you might suggest next? And then also even things like unstructured data. Now, the other thing here that we um, are really excited about is the data cloud that we introduced um, is something that really has a unique differentiator because you can pull in a lot of other external sources and with zero ETL data access between partners like Snowflake and Google BitQuery, um, you get that bi-directional data flow so you actually really can pull in um, data sources without having to um, move it or copy it. So this is really important and it really does bring together your data in a unified way to build the oh-so-elusive operational customer profile which is that unique view knowing who all the different you know, emails that you've signed up with or all the different names you've entered, they all go into one profile and then you start to capture that data and that behavior across all of these different sources. So great, we've got our data foundation. Let's move on to then how you really think about um, cr getting smarter with your data. And that is, we, I loved the conversation this week around um, data being an extension of your team, right? We are very firm believers that it's not replacing jobs, it's actually um, helping you do a lot more that you maybe couldn't have done before, um, and it's 
it's helping you explore new new realms of um, just ways to create more dynamic content and reach mm -hmm. audiences differently and smarter. So using data and AI as an extension of your team. So as you're strategizing and planning your campaigns and your, and your different tactics, all the things that you maybe are doing already, analyzing your attributes, learning from different signals, um, doing life cycle mapping, understanding each of the different stages for each customer, um, and then also looking at your audiences, you know, things like where are you looking at your least engaged versus your most engaged. Well now across these things, Start to think about how you could use Gen AI to um, segment your audiences a little bit smarter. So giving Einstein AI prompts to help you uh, create segments way faster, um, and then Einstein can actually suggest different attributes. Now again, the marketer is always on in the loop here, um, and you can actually you know, then go and refine your segments and really analyze what was pulled. But it's a really, really great way to be able to start to get so much smarter about your audience segments and even do things like look at your lookalikes. So how do you look at maybe your most engaged segments and what those attributes are and then have Einstein AI go out and help you look at some uh, similar profiles that you could then go and target as well. So it's really expanding your reach and thinking about how you can get into uh, smarter audience segmentation here. All right, so we've got our audience segments and content. We love content. Um, how do you create that meaningful content at scale using AI? Again, if you look at some of these elements when you're campaign planning, where does AI, and I want to mention too, generative, great, yes, and also there's still so much predictive AI that you know, we've been doing for years uh, that falls into this as well and can really be a part of every single workflow. So think about your campaign planning made easier. AI-powered briefs, so actually having generative AI help you plan your briefs, incorporating your corporate voice and tone, um, and actually helping you really create that process with, and we've talked about you know subject line and copy and all of that, um, but it kind of really does go beyond that and that dynamic content. Um, love all the conversations with the Movable Inc. team um, because there's some really cool things that we can do with uh, the dynamic content and generative AI uh, opportunities there. Um, and then obviously we have our Channel optimization, we've talked about how email is the foundation and really thinking about how do you take your messages and make sure that it reaches <coughs> all the right channels and it's optimizing uh, for a device as an email is always gonna be our foundation. Um, and then obviously the be behavior-based recommendations. This is a great one too, again, predictive AI has a lot of tools already that you can uh, think about how you would then predict you know, product recommendations based on those behaviors. All right, let's go into activating. This all comes to activation. You have to build a great data strategy so that you can activate. And activation does extend beyond marketing. I teased this out in a little bit in the beginning, um, but it really does go beyond just a, a marketing function. We are the face of our brands uh, as marketers, and it's important for us to consider all the places that someone's engaging. So this really does start to get into the next generation of marketing where you're pulling in your CRM data, you're pulling in maybe your service, um, and then in turn, getting a lot smarter about how you're going after those audiences and how you're engaging with them based on how they're engaging with other departments. It's gonna be a huge value driver too for those other departments, your service teams, your marketing teams, they're gonna love you. Um, so uh, this is really important and you know, having a good journey orchestration tool that can do it and allows you to then activate those campaigns across any channel. Um, and then ultimately, you have to be able to understand what's working, what's not, test, test, learn, repeat, right, going through that. So actually having some actual intelligence and visualizations is gonna be really crucial so that you can see um, all of your different performance uh, attributes and optimize and can continue that cyclical cycle. So we just went through um, a few little jobs to be done. How does that translate? So we really believe that the actionable data will translate across the customer life cycle. In turn, you're going to be able to deliver impactful moments at every stage of the life cycle. You're able to personalize web recommendations based on real-time signals. You can keep customers engaged with things like uh, WhatsApp or SMS, different channels that maybe you haven't used before, um, connecting all of those experiences into one. And I love, we've talked a lot about loyalty this week, which near and dear to our hearts as well. So fully coming through to a uh, complete life cycle uh, with actionable data. So um, I hope this was Maybe a little useful, I know 10 minutes isn't much, but um, <laughs> did want to just sort of share our thoughts on some of our data strategies at Salesforce. Uh, Blake Miller is also here at Salesforce. Um, you guys might be tired of networking at this point, um, but, and we're almost done, but um, come find us or connect with us on LinkedIn, reach out to us, we'd love to talk to you. Um, and thank you, have a great rest of the day. <laughs>